Hello and welcome back to another best of the year video. Today we're going to talk about, if you didn't watch the thumbnail at the beginning, which will be weird, we're going to talk about the top three 10 gigabit Ethernet NASes to buy in 2020. Right now at the tail end of the year, we've seen a lot of 10G. I think it's arguable that every time I do these videos, or pretty much all the videos that surround the subject of 10 gigabit Ethernet, the general cost of maxing out your network connections in your network environment to 10 times that of traditional ethernet is becoming a lot more affordable. We're seeing a lot of 10G solutions, be they switches, be they cards, be they the NASes themselves, and we're even seeing it on routers too. We're seeing a lot of 10GB arriving at price points that are barely double digits away from standard 1GBE. And you get to a point where you go, do you know what, for 50 quid, I can get a more future-proof network environment and upgrade everything else gradually. And that's why 10G NASes have become so desirable. Companies like Aquantia have been producing controllers that have allowed 10 gigabit Ethernet solutions to become fantastically affordable. It no longer costs thousands, it costs hundreds and sometimes just double digits. On top of that, you've got companies like QNAP pushing out incredibly affordable 10G switches and companies like Netgear in the background or even Fritz out there in parts of Europe that are producing solutions to be more competitive because these controllers are getting so, so efficient. So 10 gigabit Ethernet are no longer out of the reach of home users. Last year, business users could get on board and now home users, it's just a small skip and a jump away. And today, I'm going to talk about my top three 10 gigabit Ethernet solutions in network attached storage. However, there are a few disclaimers straight off the bat. You can't just randomly pick 10G solutions. As mentioned, there have been quite a lot now, thanks to the affordability and the development of more efficient chipsets and processors. So, in order to qualify all the NASes that have been considered today have to tick the following boxes. Number one, they have to have been released and available for sale before October 31st, 2020. They can have been released in 2019, 2018, or even 2017, but they have to have been available for sale before October 31st. I'm not going to consider anything that's just mailers or potential vaporware or promises for 2021. These have to be available before that date. Next, they have to be desktop only. Now, there are a lot of 10G solutions available out there for uh, rack mount. Rack mount's been around for, with 10G for quite a long time. The reason being that rack mount is considered business. I am looking at solutions now that are both home and business appropriate. Maybe people that are running an office from home, maybe they've done a lot of working from home in 2020 for obvious reasons, or they are just looking for a solution for the home that can take advantage of increased ethernet connectivity in their environment from routers you know, and switches and stuff like that. So only desktop solutions because I think rack mount is pure, pure enterprise. They've got their own best of video coming soon. Also, all solutions must have at least two years of manufacturer's warranty. We're seeing a lot of brands out there releasing pretty cheap 10G solutions out there and they cut a lot of corners and one of them is their warranty. They'll arrive with like a year, which I think is not sufficient for an investment of this magnitude. So only two years and above warranty you don't have at least that you're not on the list also they have to be hardware and software solutions we aren't looking at brainless network drives we're not looking at some of the trend net or d-link solutions where they don't even have a you know a particularly usable gui it is just ones we are looking at that are combined hardware and software solutions and finally they all have to be raid enabled of at least four bays ideally higher because we are looking at RAID 5 solutions that can saturate a 10G connection. Having a 10G uh, solution, there's a few goodies out there that have got 10G on smaller form factors, but if you don't have at least four bays of storage and RAID support, you're not gonna be able to fill a 1000 megabytes per second 10G connection. So it has to be at least four bays and RAID 5 supported, otherwise you're not on the list. So. What are my top three? Well, before we even go there, and I know I've already been banging on for a few minutes, but let's talk about the one that didn't make it, the one that got so close. Effectively, my badge for effort, the participation medal, the one that almost made the top three, and that is the TerraMaster F2422. Arguably, 
one of the first 10G 2-bay NASes. Not the first, as I was corrected. That was Asus Store with the AS40 series. But TerraMaster brought the first Intel-powered 2-bay 10GBE solution to market there. And it was very, very good. It had an Intel quad-core processor. It is 10GBE. Great stuff. But it's still a 2-bay. And even if you put two SSDs inside this device, unless you're going to use adapters that have got dual ssds inside you're not going to reach 1000 megs on this system anyway so as impressive as it was that that device arrived with two bays of a 10 gbe nas storage solution that's intel powered it just didn't qualify for my criteria and that's why it gets its participation medal and that's about it i love it but it's gone so the first NAS I want to talk about today for me that was uh, the best 10G solution that we've talked about was the F4422 from TerraMaster. It pretty much ticks all the boxes I just said about the other one. It is true to form. It is a quad-core Intel-powered solution arriving about £450. This system arrives with um, a quad-core J3455 processor. That is the previous generation Celeron. That's where some of the saving comes from. But it's a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core CPU that can be burst up to 2.3 gigahertz. Intel-powered x86. And it also arrives with support of DDR3L memory, arriving with 2 gig by default. And though there is a default model out there with 4, this system is a little bare bones uh, compared to, say, QNF and Synology in the software sense. It has enough software for photos, video, music. It has file management. It has snapshots. It runs BTRFS. It is a good system but it's not going to blow you away. It has a lot of third-party VM stuff in there. And if you are looking for a 10G solution that's more about hardware than software, but is still, you know, a robust solution, the 422 from TerraMaster is pretty good. And it arrives again at about 440, 450 quid for a RAID 5 10G solution. And it's still got two 1GB ports as well. I think it finds a nice even point and a nice entry point into 10GBE but it should be mentioned again, although it has all those software apps, they are a little simplistic and not for everyone. So next, I want to talk about the next one. This for me was the, one of the best NASs of the year, if not the best NAS I saw released this year in you know its own bracket, it has to be said, is the Synology DS1621XS+. Plus. Now, we waited a while for this. It was first unveiled. Um, uh, towards the end of 2019 and finally released in September 2020. So it was right there on the nose. Um, this is their first desktop 10G solution. It arrived with a Xeon, um, and I say it was the first, I think one of those flash stations were, but for me this is the first hard drive one. It arrived with a Xeon-based processor inside, a quad-core 2.2 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up. It arrives at a price point of about 16 to 1700 quid, and it arrived with 8 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded up to 32 gig of DDR4 memory. ECC as well, error code correction at 2666 megahertz. This CPU and memory combo in conjunction with six bays of storage, more than enough to saturate the 10G connection, and 10GBE onboard copper made it very very impressive very early doors the xeon is not the newest xeon out there it's one that some obviously have used for quite a few years since i believe uh, 2017 but they have done a lot with it and are getting increasingly more efficient with it on top of that this system also has two m2 nvme ssd caching bays for improving the internal performance and a pcie upgrade slot too so you've got 10g you've got M2 NVMe inside, and you've still got a PCIe Gen 3 times 8 slot for improving the system with even more network interface ports and other supported cards. It is a solution for me that was the right direction from Synology in their desktop series. And despite the fact that when it was first unveiled, it arrived with 2.5G slots, four of them, and that changed in development towards two 1G slots and a 10G, it's still impressive for me. And the ability that it has that price point, and as it's an excess series, it arrives with five years of warranty, tick. That ticks a lot of boxes for me. If I had to give it any negatives, the lack of SHR is a bit disappointing, and the CPU 
could maybe have been a gen higher, maybe the 1622 that we've seen floating around this year. But overall, still one of the best Synologies I've seen in a very long time. So, what is my final pick? Well, it's going to be a NAS that you're going to see quite a few times in my best ofs. And in fact, it did pop its head up quite a few times in last year's best of videos because still frankly it's one of the best ones that QNAP have done for a very long time and as much as they bring out other hardware that beats it in selective areas right now the TVS 872 XT which is now reaching about a year and a half since it was first released is just mwah. it finds everything so well the price point of around if you shop around 1850 to 2000 pounds including the VAT seems like a lot of money but you're getting an Intel 8 Gen i5 6 core processor, 16 gig of DDR4 memory that can go all the way up to 64 gig. It's got Thunderbolt 3 2 ports. It's got 10 GBE. It's an 8 bay. It's got M2 NVMe slots inside that can be used both for tiered storage and caching and for raw storage. So NVMe, look at the speed of those things. 1800 to 3000 odd typically can be used and raided together and utilized over Thunderbolt and 10GBE. There is so much to be getting on with here. On top of that, the system arrives with a myriad of applications. Much like the DS161 behind it, it has got support of file management tools, surveillance tools, multimedia tools. Um, it has just got the gamut and virtualization and a multi-tiered backup strategy. It's all on the table here. But we are looking at this just for 10GBE. Even if you look at the rest of 10G solutions from QNAP, ones that are coming soon, like the 88X series and the 73AX series, or the past, the uh, 72XT is still the score to beat, whether it is for 10 gigabit Ethernet or just generally as a NAS. And you will hear it in a few more of my best of videos because I've still yet to see a NAS beat this in so many key areas and it's still one of my favorite 10g nazis for a very long time and those are my top three 10 gigabit ethernet nazis to buy at the end of 2020 thank you so much for watching remember that in the description there are links to all of these nazis but more importantly the one at the top is the full breakdown of the why these three nazis were picked everything from the reviews to the scores to the selection process so do check those out otherwise click like if you've enjoyed the video click subscribe to learn more and I will see you next time.